Rebuilding a Stuart Double 10 V steam engine part 7. Cleaning the cylinder covers and gland nuts and reprofiling one of the steam chest covers. Followed by matching the colour of the red paint on the flywheel to paint the Stuart logos. The top and bottom steam chest covers, along with the eccentrics, have spent about 3 hours in this tumbler polisher. And although they look a bit cleaner, they're not very shiny. This is one of the steam chest covers and it's not a very good casting. What you can see around the logo is metal and a bit of sand. It won't scrape off with a screwdriver. I'm going to use a different method. I thought it would be a very good idea to use my Proxon motor tool with a dental burr. And this worked very well. I had to be very careful not to mark the front surface of the steam chest cover. Controlling a rapidly rotating dental burr against random shaped pieces of cast iron is more difficult than it looks. And some pieces of this messy cast iron around the logo is much harder than other parts. After about 10 minutes of this, the logo was cleaned up and looked a lot better. This was about halfway through the job and there's still a little bit of metal to remove yet. To be honest, I got a bit fed up doing this job so I moved on to a more interesting part of the job. These are the top and bottom cylinder covers and as you can see, the bottom cylinder covers are fitted with gland nuts. I'm going to use my Myford lathe because it's a smaller chuck and it has a sharper edge on the jaws to clamp the cylinder covers by the register that goes down into the cylinder. A health and safety warning, this is not the way to do the job. Do not press your fingers against the rapidly rotating part in a chuck. Instead, I find it a good idea to use a piece of mahogany, wrap the sandpaper around the mahogany, and that way my fingers are clear of the chuck and it allows me to apply more pressure, but what's more important, there's much less chance of getting your fingers caught in the chuck. I've been a musician for many years and I'm a keyboard player and I really do respect the fact that I need all ten fingers. I often demonstrate the stupid ways of doing things on the videos, but this is a much better way of cleaning up a cylinder cover. After doing this, I cleaned up the edges on my polishing spindle. Now it's time for the lower cylinder covers with the gland nut and I'm really surprised to find that both of the gland nuts are entirely different to each other. I work on quite a lot of miniature steam engines and I often find that more than one person had been involved in building these steam engines. Luckily most of the engine was built by a very competent engineer. What I'm doing at the moment is very carefully reprofiling the gland nuts because they're a bit chewed up. And don't forget that the register on the cylinder cover is very, very small. And the cylinder cover is only just held in the chuck, so if you put too much pressure on the job, the whole thing will fall out of the chuck and be ruined. Facing across the front was a very delicate operation. I applied very little pressure, and when I got the tool to the centre, I moved it back outwards. This is often a good way of doing it, it puts less pressure on the work. Remachining these gland nuts was a success and here you see the parts back on the bench. What I'm currently doing is removing all of the media from the tumbler polisher which finds its way into every nook and cranny. Finally I clean up the threads using an old toothbrush. The rattling that you can hear in the background are the other parts still in the tumbler polisher. This is a tool that you don't see very often. It's a very small C-spanner. I think I got it once with a model aeroplane engine. And it's the right size to undo and tighten these gland nuts. In this clip you can see what I mean about the difference in workmanship between the parts. If you look at the top gland nut, that's more or less perfect. But look at the bottom one, it's far from perfect. Luckily these parts are well hidden. Here I'm removing what's left of the graphited yarn from one of the glands. The graphited yarn is fitted in the gland to seal the piston rod so it's steam tight. But I don't think this tiny amount would do much sealing at all. What I'm doing here is cleaning up the surface of the bottom cylinder cover that will eventually be fitted with a gasket. After using the edge of a piece of wet dry sandpaper I thought it would be more scientific 
to just scrape across the surface with the lathe tool. In this clip I'm not really doing any turning, I'm just scraping off the residue from the sealant. And by doing this, when I make the new gaskets, I stand a much better chance of getting a good seal. This is my Myford M07R. It's a very small machine, but I do like it a lot. The bottom part of the cylinder cover, the outside part, doesn't really need cleaning up because it goes down inside the standards. Here I'm temporarily fitting the gland nuts just so I don't lose them. I think it was a good idea to reprofile these gland nuts because they look a lot better. I placed each of the bottom cylinder covers on the actual standards to see whether the holes lined up. The person who built this part of the engine really did know what they were doing. The bottom cylinder covers can be put in any position on the standards and every one of these brass 6BA bolts is a perfect fit. I won't be using these brass bolts to hold the parts in position, I'm going to use four 6BA Allen caphead bolts. The time has come to clean up the steam chest covers. To do this I'm using some lubricating oil on some 400 grade wet or dry sandpaper. This took a long time and I'm cleaning up both sides of the steam chest covers. I thought it would be a good idea before painting the logos to use some gun wash which is lacquer thinner or cellulose thinner to degrease the parts. It's not good to touch this stuff so I'm using my old toothbrush to thoroughly clean the parts. This image really is a close up, they don't look as bad as this but I will do a bit more work on the left hand one I think. I would normally use red Humbrol enamel for painting the logos on Stuart engines. This is number 19 and it's the gloss version of the red. I would like the logos to match the colour of the flywheel and I don't think this is Humbrol red at all. The paint on the flywheel is chipped as you can see. So with a very small paintbrush I touched it in using the Humbrol enamel but it's the wrong colour. Looking at the red I think I need to add some of this. It's LMS Crimson Lake. This is a second attempt and it clearly needs a little bit more Crimson Lake. I'm going to mix quite a bit of this on the board. That will give me enough to paint the logos on the steam chest covers. Another quick test tells me that the colour is quite good. I think it's near enough for rock and roll. I applied a generous amount of the paint to the Stuart logos. Once this first coat of the red paint has thoroughly dried and hardened, I'll give it another coat. Before giving it a second coat though, I will clean up the front surface of the steam chest covers with some more sandpaper. And that is it for this episode. The job is progressing quite well now. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.